Hi Fools, welcome to another video from The Motley Fool. I'm Owen Benelak. That wasn't too many months ago that I was sitting here saying that I didn't think that the level that the Lloyd's share price had reached, which is around the break-even point for the government, was at the end of the road. So at 73 pence, I thought there was more to go, and there has been. As I sit here, the shares are tickling, that's a technical term, tickling the 83 pence level. These shares are about to cost, I think, 83 pence, which you know, it's a pretty incredible run. It's about 60% higher over the year. Um, and there's no reason, really, why they won't get a bit higher than that, because there's good things coming for Lloyds. The dividend is very likely to be reinstated. 2014 we should see an equivalent yield to about 3%, well covered by earnings, if there can be no more kind of landmines going off or unexploded bombs found in the back of the Lloyds storeroom. And really, given the cover on that dividend yield, it could go even higher particularly if the economy starts to pick up. This is primarily now a UK-focused company. It's a way to buy into the UK economy. That sounds great, but if you're a long-term Lloyds shareholder, you might be getting overly excited. You might think, hmm, I wonder if we'll see the nearly £6, the £5.90-odd that we saw before the crisis. If you're a really old and venerable Lloyds shareholder, you might wonder if you'll see over £9, nearly £10 that the share price reached the end of the 90s. Well, I've got bad news for you if you're hanging out for that, uh, hanging on for that, which is you're not going to see it. Basically, that share price was equivalent to a much smaller number of shares in circulation. To basically bail out Lloyds, to raise money from the government, to raise money from its own investors, Lloyds issued loads and loads and loads more shares. In fact, it's 12 times the number of shares outstanding than before the crisis. That means that every penny that Lloyds owns now has to be divided up amongst 12 times as many shares as before the crisis hit. So clearly, that old money share price is kind of irrelevant. Now you have got something for your money, a little thing called HBOS. It's been a sort of bittersweet acquisition, a lot of it turned out to be a load of rubbish, but ultimately it's still got a massive mortgage book that it acquired from Halifax. It now dominates the mortgage market, and you've basically got two huge banks instead of just one. However, that is equally reflected in the price. If you look at the market cap of Lloyd's now, it's almost almost on the point of being twice what it was before the crisis, i.e. it's about where you would have been if you'd stuck Lloyds and HBOS together before the crisis. So ultimately, I think that Lloyds will continue to chug on from here, provided the UK economy keeps on grinding higher, but it would be insanity to think that you're going to see £6, let alone £10, any time, almost this century, certainly for the next couple of decades. Or so.